So I turned on the camera and the battery automatically died, so I took that as a sign to go make coffee. So Isopod Source has officially moved to South Carolina. We used to be in Massachusetts. So I'm just gonna show you guys where we're at now. We're finally out of a tiny boiler room where we could not control the temperature and we were living with my parents in their house and it was just not the greatest situation for Isopod Source as a whole. So I'm gonna show you guys some of the things that we have around here other than isopods, only because you can only film isopods so much, man. So in South Carolina, believe it or not, the climate is far warmer than in Massachusetts. It is October, right after the Tinley Park Expo, so late October, and it is 84 degrees out today. My chickens love it, my caladiums love it. The rest of my plants that I've accumulated that I've been keeping in my house in Massachusetts love it. I've been keeping one of my Monstera Deliciosas outside on the deck this whole entire time. We now have a little bromeliad collection that we've started, so I'm very excited to see what other things we can plant outside and keep outside for most of the year. So it wouldn't be right to not show you guys the new isopod room. So I have two racks directly behind me that go all the way up from the floor to the ceiling. I have a whole entire room in front of me that extends out about 12 feet past where I'm sitting. We're able to keep all of our reptiles as well as all of the isopods, or at least most of the isopods in this room. Dwarf whites and things like that do not stay here because they take up too much residence. Today, I don't have anything picked out to talk about. I just showered, I made it here, I turned on the camera, I am here to talk about isopods. We were just at the expo, I did get a couple species that I previously had, maybe lost in a crash or the move or other mysterious circumstances, so I was able to repurchase a bunch of species. Let's get into what I find interesting today. So the first species that I'm gonna pull out and I was just taking care of and putting away are Porcelia warneri. These are the ultimate flat boys. They come to us from Greece and they are pretty reminiscent of some of our larger Porcelio species like the Hoffman Segii and the Magnificus as well as Bolivari. They are a pleasure to watch grow and for some reason I've been doing really well with them lately. So the next guys I am putting away were a show pickup. They sort of got lost in translation when we were back in the stuffy boiler room. And Porcelio are a species that I struggle with religiously ever since I started, especially most of the Spanish species other than Hoffman Segi and Bolivari. So Porcelio Magnificus. These guys get absolutely huge. These two, I would say, are sub-adults or juveniles. Let's see if I can get my gross pinky next to them. So that's more than a segment of my pinky. So Kubaris White Angel have always been my favorite. These are actually just a morph of the Kubaris species Red Edge. It, at first they were called White Angel, now it seems like people are mostly just calling them Albino. They are the T-negative Albino as they do have that extra white look to them. Whereas the T positive ones have a little bit more of a yellow sheen. Kubaris Shiro Utsuri. They are my absolute favorite. They're always moving. They're always out and about in their enclosure. Literally right now they are all moving, all huddled around different pieces of 
moss and bark. <laughs> so this is them currently. All they do is roam around and hang out by the food. Lenny, get out! So that's pretty much all I have for the isopods. I don't remember if I ever finished talking about how cool the Shiro Tsuri are, but if you liked any part of anything that you saw today, leave a comment what it was. I can do more of it. In any case, see you guys next time. <laughs>